I'm Miss Hannah, and today we are going to be drawing a still life of flowers and bugs. So for those of you who had me before in February, you'll remember that we did a still life of fruit, and that a still life is a drawing or a painting of things. So we are going to be doing a drawing of flowers and bugs, which are things. Um, before we learn a little bit about the artist we will be inspired by, his name is Jan von Kessel, the elder, we're going to learn a little bit about flowers and bees. So I want you to watch the video that I have um, in the lesson materials. It's a little YouTube video. It's about four minutes, and it'll just tell you all about bees. It'll tell you how they make honey. Um, it'll tell you why they go from flower to flower, different types of bees. It's a really fun video, so give that a watch and then come back here, and I will explain what we are doing today. Okay, hope you watched the video. So if you look at the lesson materials I provided, I have this picture, which is a diagram of the different parts of the flower. Now this is a complicated diagram. It's got lots of scientific terms. It really breaks the flower down. I wanted you to have this though, so that when you are drawing flowers, you can really think about the different parts of flowers. Now this looks like a lily flower. That's my guess. Um, and you really see all of this, all of this um, stamen and everything. You really see that, but in some flowers you don't. So depending on the type of flower, you might have all of these different parts. But just remember, whatever type of flower you want, you want to make sure it has the petals. So those are these parts the pollen in the center. So a lot of times if it's something like a daisy, you'll just see some yellow in the center. Maybe you won't see all of this. The stem and leaves. So if you're not gonna draw a flower like this, this is a very complicated flower. You can just draw a flower that has petals, pollen, stem, and leaves, okay? Um, I hope you guys had fun learning all about bees. I have this diagram here which shows all the different parts of a honeybee. And I want you to look at this again so that when you're drawing your honeybee, you can put in as much scientific information as possible. So we got the head, we got the thorax, we got the abdomen. When you think about it, the shape of a honeybee's body is kind of like a snowman. There's a circle for the head, an oval for the thorax, and kind of a teardrop shape for the abdomen. So their body is kind of built like a snowman. And then they have the legs coming off of it, antennas coming off of it, the wings, the eyes. So just give this a look when you're drawing your honeybee. Now I want you guys to practice this on your own. I have a picture of a cute, fuzzy honeybee right here. Practice pointing to these different parts on the honeybee so you really learn them. All right, let's talk about the artist we are learning about today. His name is Jan van Kessel the Elder. Um, so the phrase the elder, it really just means senior. So um, Martin Luther King Sr. was Martin Luther King Jr.'s dad. Jan van Kessel the Elder is Jan van Kessel the Younger's dad. So it's just another way to say senior. Um, it sounds very fancy. So Jan von Kessel lived from um, 1626 to 1679. He was 53 years old when he died. So he didn't live that long, but he made a lot of art in that time. Um, he lived in Belgium, which is in Europe. It's kind of in the middle of Europe. And he lived there his whole life. Uh, he loved science, and he loved getting into all the stuff we were learning about today with the parts of flowers, the parts of bugs. He wanted to make his still lifes, his drawings of flowers and bugs, as accurate as possible. And some of them were even included in science textbooks of that time. So he loved science. He loved learning about flowers and animals and plants, and he loved recording it as clearly as he could. Um, this is one of his paintings. So I want you guys to take a look at this 
There's a lot of different types of bugs. See if you can name as many different types of bugs as you can see. I'm going to start off with some easy ones. There's a bumblebee here. There's a beetle down here. See if you can name the other bugs. This is another still life of his, and this is what we're really going to be inspired by today. At first glance, we look at this. What do we see? The flowers. There's a ton of flowers. But when we get up a little closer, we start seeing bugs. This painting is kind of like an I spy. I want you guys to look and see how many bugs you can find. I found nine, but I'm sure there's more. See if you can find the nine bugs that I found. Um, you'll also notice that the flowers are all coming out of this vase at the bottom. The vase is on a table and there's a really dark background. This was the style that um, Jan von Kessel, the elder, used to make these beautiful scientific flower and bug paintings. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to draw a basket to put our flowers in. You can make this basket any shape you want, any size you want. I'll show you how I do mine, but it's up to you how you do yours. So I have my paper, I have a pencil, I have an eraser. I'm gonna do a basket at the bottom of my paper kind of like the letter D on its side. And you can add some detail. I'm gonna give my basket some handles. And I'm going to give it some detail. Really make it look like a woven basket. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a table that my basket is sitting on. This is super easy. Just draw a line. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be drawing flowers that go in your basket, just like in the still life we looked at. So you can choose whatever type of flowers you want to draw. I'm going to do, I think, a daisy to start out, but you guys could do any type of flowers. So carnation, sunflower, you could do a tiger lily. You can look up flowers online, try drawing different types of flowers. If you have a garden, you can go outside, 
go to the park. There's a lot of um, crocuses and daffodils coming up because it is spring. So I'm going to start out just with the daisy. I'm going to have the stem coming out of my basket. Then I'm going to draw a circle. That's where all the seeds and the stamen will be. And then I'm going to start drawing petals. to draw a bee. So when we're doing this, we're going to think about the parts of the bee we learned at on our we learned about on our worksheets. So when we are looking at that, we have the head, eyes, antenna, the thorax that's kind of like its torso, the abdomen that's like its lower body, and then we have six legs. We have wings, we have a stinger, Okay, so if you want to look at that picture on the worksheet, you can do that. Again, you can look at pictures online of different honeybees. Um, you can draw it wherever you want. Like in the still life, we had some bugs on the flowers themselves. We had bugs around the flowers. We had bugs on the table. So I'm going to do a bee just to start out with. I think I'm going to do him right over here. So I'm starting with a circle for the head. I'm going to do an oval for the thorax and then kind of a teardrop shape for the abdomen. I have my three legs, my two antenna, an eye, feeler, and then the stinger. And then I'm just going to do my wings and add a little fuzziness because we know honeybees are fuzzy. Okay, so I did my basket, I did my table, I did my flower, I did my bee. The rest of your drawing is up to you. Um, you can add whatever other flowers you want. You can add other bugs too. In the still life we looked at, there weren't just bees. There were butterflies, there were beetles, there were grasshoppers. So if you want to add other bugs, feel free to. Um, you can also get really creative with it. These don't have to be flowers that exist in our world right now. You could make up your own flower. You could make up your own bug. Get creative with it and have fun. Okay, so I just finished drawing the rest of my flowers and my bugs. Um, I did the daisy. Um, I did a big kind of like a dahlia flower. And this one's more like a tiger lily, like the one we looked at in the diagram. And then I added another bee. I added two butterflies and a caterpillar. And um, yeah, you can do whatever bugs you want, as many or as few. I also did some... Um, like grasses behind the flowers just to kind of fill up the basket. If you can, try to get your flowers to overlap a little bit. Um, that's just going to make your picture look fuller and more interesting. Um, 
try to get them to overlap, think of how you can fill up the space. The next thing you're going to do, once it's all drawn, you're going to grab something to add color with. So this could be anything you want, anything you have around the house. Um, I have colored pencils here. You might have crayons at home, you might have markers at home. Um, whatever you want to add color with, go for it. How I'm going to color it is I'm going to outline everything with a black pen just so it really stands out and then add color with my colored pencils but use whatever you can find at home. Okay, so I just finished coloring in my drawing. Um, I just used colored pencils. I made the stems and the leaves all different shades of green. I colored in the bees, black and yellow. I have the caterpillar down here. The butterflies, I made different colors. Um, I colored in my flowers. I did the table brown. Your table doesn't have to be brown. I did the basket a kind of brownish yellow. It could be any color you want. Um, for the background, I did this dark blue purple. I wanted it to look similar to the um, still life that we looked at. They had that really dark background. Um, so you could do that if you want. You could also color the background any color. You could make a window behind it. You can make it outside. Um, so yeah, this is the finished product. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful time with this project.